his political graphic power and translate that to electoral power. And why we're doing it is, if you remember, it's really all about HR 447. All this goes back to December 12, December 16, 2005, last year, when HR 447, an anti-immigrant bill passed. And what we want to remind our community is, unlike in 94 with Prop 187, where what we did is we protested, we had a big march, and nothing more. What we're going to do is make sure that that momentum stays, and we take that momentum that happened in the streets and really put it again to electoral power. Because what we know is that if we really want to see policy gains, if we really want to stop the ongoing attack on immigrants, it can't just be mass mobilization. It's really, again, making sure that our communities have the power at the polls to make a difference. So that July 1st will be the kickoff, and uh, the campaign is called Democracy Summer, and the goal is to um, naturalize, register, and um, get out to vote over one million new participants around the country. And the activities are very diverse, but there's three basic pieces. One is the civic participation that I mentioned, the two is about mass mobilizations, and we'll continue to do that. And the next one we expect to plan on for is some groups in the Asian American community to speak about it. And so before we introduce them, I'm going to let Tiki give remarks in an introduction in Korean, and then we'll have the speakers go on. Thank you. 네, 안녕하세요. 어, 어제 수능부터 저희가 읽었을 텐데, 오늘 좀더 아쉬운 것 같아요. 어, 오늘 기자회견은 어, 다들 자료를 받아보셨겠지만, 7월 1일 날 정부 으로 진행되는 정부 시민권 신청의 날을 시작으로 해서 어, 올 하반기 동안 이민자 커뮤니티에서 펼쳐나갈 그 시민 참여를 위한 여름 캠페인을 소개하기 위해서 마련을 했습니다. 어, 모두 아시다시피 지난해 12월 달에 그 연방 하원에서 HR 4437이 통과됨으로 인해서 이민자 커뮤니티는 어, 굉장히 충격을 받았고 어, 또 굉장한 불안과 혼란 속에 이제 빠지게 되는데요. 그럼에도 불구하고 이민자 커뮤니티에서는 지난 상반기 동안 어, 상원 논의를 앞두고 시작된 여러 가지 그 다양한 활동들을 통해서 어, 상원 논의의 흐름을 바꿔놓았고 또 실질적으로 어, 상원 논의에서 이민자 커뮤니티 요구가 어느 정도 수용된 어, 그런 그 법안이 통과될수록 어, 통과될 수 있도록 하는데 어, 일조를 했습니다. 물론 그 상원 법안이 이민자 커뮤니티에서 요구하는 모든 내용을 다 담아내지는 못했지만 어, 앞으로 상황원 조정위원회라든지 어, 여러 가지 과정 속에서 이민자 커뮤니티에서 할수 있는 일들은 더욱 많고 또 어, 저희가 해야 되는 일들이 많은 것으로 보고 있습니다. 어, 그런 차원에서 저희들이 그 전국적으로 어, 시민 참여를 위한 여, 여름 캠페인을 시작을 하게 되는데요. 이 캠페인은 어, 그동안 이제 선거에 관한 활동들이라고 하면은 투표율을 높이기 위한 그런 활동들이었는데 이래서 어, 이번에는 그 시민권 어, 취득을, 취득을 통해서 이제 이민자들이 유권자 자격을 획득하게 되는 그것부터 시작을 해서 어, 시민권 취득, 유권자 등록, 그리고 유권자들에 대한 선거 교육, 어, 그리고 실질적으로 투표에 참여할 수 있도록 하는 투표 동료 활동까지 총 망라된 어, 종합적인 캠페인을 진행을 하게 됐습니다. 지금 전국적으로 그 시민권 신청 자격을 갖추고 있지만 아직 영주권자로 남아있는 어, 이민자들은 전국에 한 800만 명 정도로 추산이 되고 있고요. 그 중에 한 230만 명 정도가 캘리포니아에 거주하는 것으로 나타났습니다. 그래서 이 어, 분들을 대상으로 해서 시민권 신청 캠페인을 대대적으로 벌이게 되고요. 어, 그 시작을 알리는 것이 7월 1일 어, 그 전달을 다 받으셨을 텐데요. 7월 1일 날그 컨벤션 센터에서 열리는 시민권 신청의 날을 그 저희가 개최를 하게 됐습니다. 그래서 이날 오시게 되면 은 시민권 신청에 관한 그 모든 서비스를 무료로 받으실 수 있게 되고요. 물론 어, 그 이민 도구로 어, 내야 되는 수수료는 저희가 부담을 해드릴 수는 없지만 어, 이날 시민권 신청에 관한 모든 그 어, 상담 및그 신청 보조를 받으실 수가 있습니다. 이것을 위해서 지금 그 어, 다른 이민자 커뮤니티뿐만 아니라 코리안 커뮤니티를 비롯한 아시안 아메리칸 커뮤니티에서 그 많은 방문자들이 지금 준비를 하고 있고요. 이 캠페인을 통해서 저희가 어, 시민권 취득 그리고 유권자 어, 선거 참여 활동 어, 그리고 궁극적으로 저희 이민자 커뮤니티의 요구가 어, 정치에 영향을 미칠 수 있도록 하는 그런 종합적인 캠페인을 어, 펼쳐 나갈 것입니다. 그래서 민주학교와 민주한국 공사교육단 체험회를 포함한 그 많은 한인 단체들이 이번 캠페인을 하반기 동안 어, 활발하게 펼쳐나갈 예정입니다. 아, 오늘 그세 분의 스피커가 나와 계시는데요. 어, 남가주 
기독교 교회 협의회에서 전석호 목사님, 총무 목사님 되시고요. 어, 나와주셨고, 그리고 그 한미 변호사협회와 남성법률 보조재단에서 활동하고 계시는 조혜미 변호사님 나오셨고요. 아티 법률센터의 마크 요시다 프로그램 디렉터 나와 계십니다. So, um, I will give a little bit more statistics uh, following what Peter was saying in terms of actually uh, those who are eligible to be naturalized around the country, there are 8 million who are eligible to be uh, citizens. And in California alone, it's 2.3 million. Specifically for the Korean American community, we know that Korean Americans are the sixth largest immigrant group um, that is naturalizing. Um, but at this point, we still have 216,000 legal permanent residents who are eligible to naturalize who are not naturalized. And those are those um, that we're trying to reach out to starting from July 1st. Um, we're going to read out the list of speakers and they'll speak in order, so we'll introduce them in one. Um, the first speaker will be Pastor Selko Jun, who is uh, from the Korean Church Association of Southern California. And this is one of the organizations that's sponsoring this event and has been working with us, if you remember, for the last few months, uh, starting from March with the mobilization. Um, the next speaker will be Joanne Lee, and um, she's representing the Legal Aid Foundation of LA, which is a sponsor of this event, and the Korean American Bar Association, another sponsor. And also, I'm proud to say that Joanne Lee is also a board member of the Korean Resource Center. And finally, is Mark Ishida uh, from the Asian Pacific American Legal Center, which has been a longtime partner with us on many activities. And so this is just one of many work um, that we do together. And so we'll start with uh, Pastor Sokko Jun. Uh,就是那么就是一个，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，会议，呃，
uh, fill out the forms and really educate people about the naturalization process. Uh, many people participated in the marches um, and have done, have done other things around the immigration reform and they wonder how else they can get involved. Well, this is a great opportunity for people to come um, and really help people, other people also get involved um, in the political process and really understand how they can make a difference. Uh, we will be providing a full training um, on Thursday, June 29th. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. It's going to be at the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles office. Um, and we will be providing a full training on how to fill out the forms. Um, so if, if, whether you're an attorney or not, if you want to get involved in helping, we need a lot of volunteers. So I hope that people will um, come forward and volunteer for the general first event. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mark Yoshida. I'm a staff attorney with the Asian Pacific American Legal Center. I want to thank uh, Matt the Second KRC for uh, having this uh, press conference and, and to all of you for coming. Um, I'm going to go over very briefly the requirements for citizenship, uh, the process that applicants will have to go through in order to become citizens. Then I'll talk a little bit about the workshop, what people should expect when they go to the workshop, um, and the documents that they should bring there. And then I'll just follow up with some reminders and some tips for um, all the applicants. So as far as the requirements, if you want to take a look at the purple sheet, um, it's fairly information packed, so I'm not going to spend too much time with it. You can take a look at it a little bit later. I'll just go over very briefly uh, the requirements. The first is the applicants have to be at least 18 years of age. They have to have been lawfully admitted to the U.S. as permanent residents, which basically means that they're permanent residents, that they have green cards. They have to have continuously resided in the U.S. Uh, for at least five years from the time that they became permanent residents, the time that they filed their applications. They have to have been physically present in the U.S. for at least two and a half out of the past five years. And they have to have resided within the district for at least three months. They have to show what's called good moral character, and it tends to be kind of a technical issue, but basically if they don't have any criminal record, they should be okay. Um, if they do have a criminal record, we can check that out to make sure that they're eligible before they do file an application. Uh, they have to be attached to the principles of the Constitution uh, of the United States, which means that they have to basically um, come to be a good U.S. citizen. Uh, they have to be able to speak, read, and write basic English, so it's not very high level of English. But, uh, they can understand me right now. If they can speak, read, and write at uh, essentially a second grade level, they should be okay. Um, they have to uh, demonstrate the knowledge and understanding of U.S. civics, which means basic government and history. So they'll be asked things like, uh, what are the colors of the flag, who is the first president, and things like that. And they have to take an oath of allegiance, which is the final step of the um, application process. That's where they go to a big ceremony, raise the right hand, and come to be the U.S. citizen. So those are the basic requirements in a nutshell. The process is um, what an applicant wants to do is first to make sure that he or she is qualified for citizenship. So they would go through the um, eligibility uh, checklist to make sure that they meet all those qualifications. Um, they would file their citizenship application, and that is this form here. It's not as big as this, but basically this is what they're going to be completing. Um, they would submit this to the Immigration Service uh, with their photographs, a copy of the green card, and the application fee. The application fee for most applicants is $400. Uh, for applicants who are at least 75 years of age or older, have to pay only $330. So it's a little bit cheaper for um, the elderly. Um, and that payment can be in check or money order. Um, after that, uh, they will have their fingerprint, fingerprint taken uh, by the uh, Immigration Service. They'll get an appointment notice from uh, them for that. And then after that, they'll have an interview uh, with the Immigration Service. <coughs> Part, part that then people tend to be very nervous about. It's just an interview, it's not a trial. Um, they will be asked questions about their um, application to make sure all the information is complete and accurate. Um, and during that time, of course, their English will be assessed. The immigration officer will be asking them questions in English, and they <coughs> will have to respond. Um, they will be taking an examination on the government in history. It's basically uh, a test of 10 questions. At least, if they get at least six correct, they'll pass. Um, and there's a dictation, so they will be asked to write a simple sentence in English, and that's the basic interview. Um, assuming they pass the interview, they will be scheduled for a swearing-in ceremony. Again, that's the final step, which will be about a month, uh, two months later. Um, and at the ceremony, they will get their certificate of naturalization, and they become citizens. 
Uh, now, the workshop itself um, on July 1st, uh, we will be helping people with their applications. So um, people will be screened for their eligibility. We'll have uh, immigration attorneys there talking to people, making sure that they are qualified for citizenship. And if they are, then they will be helping with their citizenship applications, the N-400 form. And we will have all the forms available at the workshop so people don't have to bring those. We will take their photos, uh, we will make a copy of the green card, and we will have information and materials so that they can prepare for the interview. Um, in order to make this process go as quickly and as easily as possible, people should remember that there's some information, some documentation that they should bring to the workshop. And all of that's listed in your packets. It's on the back of the flyer. Um, I'll go through a few of the more important things. Um, at the very top, you'll see there needs to be a check of money order um, for $400. Again, for applicants for at least 75 years of age, it's only $330. Um, people should bring in the green cards. Um, it would help if they brought in a copy of the green cards that they can include with the application. If they forget that, that's okay. We'll make a copy there. They should bring a date, uh, a list of all the trips that they've taken outside the U.S. since they became a permanent resident. Um, and so they should look through all the passports and try to figure out when they left and when they came back to the U.S. and what countries that they went to. Um, passports tend to be very difficult to read if you take a lot of trips. So if they can't figure it out, then bring in the passports and we'll try to um, unravel that for them. They should bring in a list of all the addresses of where they live for the past five years, and they should bring a list of their employers for the past five years. If they've been married before, if they have any children, uh, they should bring information that's listed here. Um, and probably the most important thing is if they've ever had any run-ins with the law, if they have any kind of criminal history, they should bring in a record of what happened to them. Um, this will help us to determine whether or not it's a good idea for them to file the application. The last thing an applicant wants to do is file an application and not have that information available because if it turns out that they're not eligible for citizenship, they'll find out at the <coughs> interview. And at that time, if they're deportable, they'll eventually be sent to notice to a county court. So it's very important that we get all that information up front before we file any kind of application. So we do encourage applicants to get that information to us. If they don't have the information available by the time of the workshop, that's okay. We still have them with the, the application but we will not file it until we have all the information available um, and that we've had the chance to review it. And finally, um, just a few uh, reminders and hints. Um, this event is for eight, all um, communities, all immigrant communities, so Korean, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Latin, Latino communities, anybody who needs help with an application um, is welcome to come. The event is totally free. There's no cost involved. Of course, the applicants will have to pay the application fee, but there's no cost for the service. Um, we do intend to have translators there um, and people who can speak um, different languages, but we can't guarantee that there will be enough for are still looking for some volunteers. So if you can remind uh, applicants to bring their own translators if possible, that would be a big help for us. Um, and remember, uh, all, in, all uh, applicants should be prepared to provide all the information that is needed on the application. Um, some people are kind of uh, embarrassed about some things that have happened to them in the past that they've ever gotten. Um, if they've ever been in court before, uh, they might not be willing to bring that up. But it's important that we know it in order to develop the application correctly. So we have to encourage all the applicants to be as honest and complete with us as possible in order for us to help them correct. Um, there are English and citizenship classes available everywhere around Los Angeles. Most of them are free. So if people are having trouble with their English or civics, um, they can uh, check out that information with the local school. And the library is a wonderful repository of information. So um, there are videos, there are books uh, to help people with that process. Um, and uh, just to hammer home the point, um, this application is really the most important step, I think, in immigration. Um, people who are here as permanent residents have no guarantee that they'll be able to remain here if they ever get, um, you know, if there, if there are any kind of problems. Immigration is not becoming any easier for people. Um, with citizenship, they have all the rights and all the privileges of any U.S. citizen who is born in the U.S. So it's very important that people who are qualified for citizenship to just fill out this form, make sure that they're qualified, go help them with it. Um, and it becomes a uh, citizen as soon as possible. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark, and to our other
speakers. They're not here just to give important information, but again, um, this is a coalition effort, and uh, they represent organizations that are key uh, to making July 1st a success. Uh, we should also mention again that it's not as Mark is saying just within the Asian American community. This was specifically a press conference to announce it to the Korean American and Asian American community. But we are working in coalition through the We Are America Coalition in LA. And that includes groups that are working in the Latino community from Carecen to Cherula uh, to the Mexican Confederations um, and Hermandad Mexicana and other um, Latino organizations. Uh, as well, a reminder that this is a national event and it's part of the We Are America Alliance, which NACASEC is a part of. And what we're trying to do again is to again um, realize that immigrants have a real potential to make their voices heard. And in order to do that, we really need to create a seamless path towards citizenship. And that means addressing undocumented immigrants and giving them a chance to speak out. Because they are still residents in this country and they have rights here as residents in this country. But also to realize that legal permanent residents have a real opportunity to speak out more by becoming citizens. And then when citizens come election period, we'll be working to register them and also making sure that they come out on election day as well. So this is, again, part of a larger campaign that we're working on. And again, it's all towards the realization of immigrant power and immigrant voices and also to impact um, policy changes that impact our, direct, uh, our lives itself. Thank you for the, uh, attending this press conference. Uh, I think you will say some more closing remarks and then we'll open it up for questions. 여러분들께서 말씀해 주셨듯이 이 시민권 신청의 날을 시작되는 어, 그 시민 참여를 위한 캠페인을 전국적으로 지금 